as one of the world's best Minecraft coders in a big house with a six pack. In this video, I'm going to be showing you anti piracy. All right, waiting for the comments, guys. Anyways, in this video, this topic might be a little bit controversial, so I might as well be a little bit even more controversial in the intro. I'm going to be discussing how to crack plugins and we're going to be discussing anti piracy. I have prepared uh, a arbitrary but fully functional code in my plugin chat control. Chat control is a premium plugin, I'm not going to make an ad for it, uh, and it does not have anti-piracy. And I'll explain why, you know, in the end of this video. So if you have five minutes, please keep watching because this can save you hours of your time if you're trying to add anti-piracy to your plugins. Now. This is a very basic check. This is basically what everybody teaches. And I think it's absolute garbage. So let me show you how that works. It's a simple URL request that goes into an endpoint. This can be our website. This is my website. And then we're simply issuing a post request and I can even forge a fake user agent pretending to uh, connect from say Google Chrome, right? Nothing fancy right here. We also need to put in some data to be read by this website. So uh, most most of you guys are familiar with this. And if you Google Spigot MC anti-piracy placeholders, you can read about it. It's basically what is inserted, what is looked for in your plugin when somebody's downloading it. And these things are then automatically translated into say user ID is the ID of the user downloading the plugin, a uh, resource and nonce. And I've also seen people paste some activation or serial key that they give to every single buyer after their purchase. So there we have it. It's right there. And then we simply issue a post request, nothing fancy again. And if the response, if the server says den denied, then we will simply throttle uh, the plugin. And this is how it works, right? If I start the plugin, it'll simply connect to the anti-piracy server. It'll say invalid serial key plugin is now disabled. Oops. Now, how can we crack this? Well, there is something called Java bytecode. You see, when you compile a plugin, the Java code, meaning this, is simply converted into something called bytecode, which is more messy, but it is faster for machine to read. And this bytecode can then be edited. So somebody can come here and they can just delete this entirely from your code, even if they don't have access to the actual source code. We're going to be using something called Recaf, which is Claim Modern Bytecode Editor. You can download this from GitHub and there's been multiple br branches. I just, I'm just going to use the branch 2.x. And after opening, I can just drag the chat control file into it. There we go. And I can look for the classes. There we go. Here is the anti-piracy class. Let me just double click it. And we have pretty much the same thing that we had in the source code. Now, what I'm interested in is changing this denied response right here. So what I can do, I can just right click, check, edit with assembler. And then even though I have no idea how to edit this bytecode, because I am not a bytecode guru. Remember, I said at the beginning that I'm a Java guru and micro plugin guru, which obviously was a joke. I can just use my common sense and I can look for denied, which is right here. And I can change this to, I don't know, this will be never returned. Save it. Close this. Verify. There we go. It's right here. Then go to file, export program, and then chat control. I don't know. Something like this. Save it. Oh, and by the way, you know, these hackers, these kids, hackers, they like to put in their special messages into stuff. So why not just edit the startup logo as well? Correct. Bye. Kangroko, yes, that is actually me. I'm going to crack my own plugin. I don't care. There we go. Save it, export, and there you have it. It says cracked by Kangroko, and the plugin is fully functional. We can verify it if I type in chc to start the main command. Well, that's great, but I obfuscate my plugin. Well, if you, you know, try to hide the source code of your plugin by obfuscating, the process is surprisingly very easy. All you have to do is simply spend a little bit more time, typically starting from the main class. So I open up this main class right here. And even if these tools are, you know, crashing the decompiler, it says parse error. This is because, you know, I've inserted a couple of crashers for this decompiler. It should be uh, quite easy to figure out. All you're gonna do is 
look for the string. So config search strings, we're going to be looking for denied. There we go, contains search. And now we can see that this class is now called AUX. So we can open this with assembler, denied right here. Try to change it, something else, save it and export uh, the program. Now, this does not seem to work. I've tested it. You may be thinking, well, you see, just obfuscate the code. No, because there is multiple uh, tools that can perform the same job. There is another tool. It's called JBuyEdit, and it works the same way, right? You can simply find a string, then it, it's right here, go to method, and then you can simply edit it, just like this one, file, save as, chat control, and there we go. Now the plugin is fully cracked, despite being obfuscated, despite using you using five different obfuscator and, you know, crashing everything. Yes, there are tools that can simply bypass it. And even if they can't, uh, the bytecode can still be opened no matter how much time you spend into obfuscating your plugin. And yes, there is a next level to it. You know, people obfuscate their strings. However, you can only obfuscate a string in Java. So it means that the Java code also necessarily contains the obfuscator for the string, the encryption for uh, the string. And what you end up doing is just wasting more time for the cracker. So instead of them taking two minutes, now they're gonna take five minutes if the code is obfuscated. And if the code has like encrypted strings, it's gonna take them say two, three hours. So the whole point of anti-piracy, I believe that's my personal take in Java, is not to prevent it, okay? Yes, you can obfuscate your code heavily, Oh, uh, I mean, Spigot rules don't allow it, but you know, don't sell on Spigot, just uh, move your plugin away to, to somewhere else. The reason for obfuscation can be valid if you don't want somebody to steal your, you know, intellectual property, steal your ideas and stuff like that. But necessarily to have anti-piracy to prevent piracy, I think it's a waste of time. It's the wrong mindset. The only way that I see anti-piracy fit in Java plugins is when you're trying to deter you're trying to waste as much time as possible so that it just becomes, you know, a burden, right? And instead of them spending five minutes, now they have to spend three days or two days trying to figure this out. I know a couple of plugins who were not, that were not cracked in like a month because, you know, they've spent a lot of time on this. So again, I just want to like shift your mindset instead of trying to completely prevent the anti-piracy, um, try to like de deter and like waste their time and you know unless you are a big seller unless your plugins are very much in demand they they're just gonna give up because they all focus on cracking uh demanding plugins such as mine right and even my plugins were cracked believe it or not even i came out with like super advanced systems that i'll try to explain in the next video that are close to uncrackable they were still just cracked and honestly guys if you wonder if i obfuscate or uh, if I insert anti-piracy in my plugins, the answer is no. Yes, I did insert it for the purpose of this video, but I don't do it for three years. Number one, back in the days we were selling on Spigot and, you know, we broke all the rules. Uh, that's why they kicked us out. Long story short, they banned anti-piracy and I just could not do it. So I'm like, okay, I'll try not doing it. And I was really afraid if the sales are going to go down. They did not. The sales actually kept very much, you know, what we've seen uh, in the months prior. It made no difference. And yes, there's been a couple of cheap knockouts of my plugins, but who cares? They are not getting downloads. If somebody, you know, gets downloads, get it, gets attention, we'll just report them. We'll get them shut down for stealing the code. There's been no problems whatsoever in the last three years, me not using anti-piracy. I mean, perhaps when I'm going to make a new plugin, maybe for like the first, you know, three to six months to a year, I'm going to use, you know, like very light obfuscation because I just don't want people to say like steal the code blatantly. But after the plugin has established it play, its place on the marketplace and is respected, I don't think you need to waste so much time on this. Guys, focus on uh, making a quality product. Focus on, you know, making people happy, making your customers happy, making sure that the plugin doesn't have bugs, or that it actually delivers, that it's unique, that it's customizable, that it improves the server. And that's 
all uh, where your energy can go. Because I really can see if you are a single developer, you're trying to split your energy on like five different arenas, anti-piracy, this, 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 the plugin's quality is gonna go down. If you're wasting so much time on anti-piracy, then necessarily that time must be taken from somewhere else, right? So especially if you are a single dev, don't focus on this too much. I think the whole anti-piracy is overrated in the community. As I explained, maybe you can set up like the very basic world guard if you do want to have, you know, some very basic uh, obfuscation in Java, but that's about it. Don't really bother with it. Yes, in the next video, I'll discuss a couple of like deeper steps if that's a necessity for you, if you have a very specific issue but if you just want to publish your plugins you know outside don't be afraid with it um again we did not obfuscate our plugins for three years now the world did not end it uh, people are still purchasing we haven't seen any declines and it's been completely fine so i guess that explains a lot and you know please use the knowledge in this video responsibly okay you don't start to go berserk on people that you don't like cracking their plugins and stuff like that use it responsibly the reason i show this too is just to demonstrate that even if you spend like 15 hours learning this somebody can just crack it in five minutes so i just don't want you to waste your time that's why i show this too thank you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and if you want to learn more about minecraft plugins java we do have a course it's called project orion it took me about a year to build uh, last update being just a couple of months old there is a full certification of completion it requires no java experience whatsoever if you've never coded before yes there is a full two hour long video on anti-piracy obfuscating plugins i'm going to give you the full proguard config even php server scripts and there's a full 30 day money back guarantee from the very day you start coding which can be two months later so if you want to build your own micro plugins check the link check the link in the description otherwise i am saying goodbye to you and we will speak soon thank you Thank you.